this week we are working on my son's room and he has this really big space and I want some bookshelves for his room. So we're gonna do a Billy bookcase hack. It's gonna have a fireplace and hidden storage. I'm so excited to show you how the whole thing comes together. Here is a before of my son's room. You can see this wall just had a mural on it. It was blankets right by his bed, but we're gonna shift the whole room around and I want to add bookcases on this wall so it'll really ground the space and make it much more interesting. To begin, we're gonna start by taking everything off this wall, outlet covers, trim, beadboard, baseboards, everything that's kind of in the way of where the bookcases will go, it's got to come off. Next, we're going to build the Billy bookcases that'll make up the built-ins. To build them, just follow the instructions from Ikea for putting them together, and by building it, you'll get the correct depth for how big we need to build the base, so it's important to do this first. And here we're taking off the beadboard from the wall. This is just so that the bookcases can be as flush to the wall as humanly possible. Now that the wall is prepped, let's build a base. To do this, cut two by six inch boards the same length as the room our wall is 114 inches so we cut the length of pieces for the front and back and eight inch the long pieces for the cross the supports off the ground attach so all four floor pieces to link together with screws it'll also give support to the shelves and a place to attach baseboards for that built-in look if needed, remove the flooring where the bookcase base will go. This you should do with carpet or since we have laminate floors, those aren't supposed to be under anything built in. So we use the base to trace where the line will go that we need to cut out the floors and then we use a dremel to cut them so the base will sit on the original flooring. This way the base can be built directly onto the subfloor or whatever the original flooring will be, it'll be much more secure. To make the base super sturdy, we added in seven pieces of support boards into the inside of the base. The supports are placed at the end of each bookcase and then evenly spaced so there's a support at each end of each bookcase and one in the middle of the wider bookcases. The last and especially crucial step of creating the base is to make sure it's level. And now place the Billy bookcases on the base. Our project's a little tricky because the ceiling angles on our old house, so the bookcase on the right side is at a shorter height to work with the slope. Now we're going to build the top support. To do that, we're going to cut two by fours the length of the top of the bookcases. Use a stud finder, then screw the two by four into a stud in the wall. This top support is important to the structure and it will provide a surface for the crown molding to be attached to. Cut support pieces out of two by fours and then screw them onto the top of each edge of the bookcase and one in the middle too. Then screw the front two by four into place. Finish by using screws to attach the bookcase to the top support. Do this through the top of the bookcase into the two by four support pieces. Next, use screws to attach the two bookcases together. This will make them very sturdy. Now we're going to build a side support. This isn't necessary for this structure, but because of the spacing of our angled wall, it made the most sense to have a bit of space on this side. This made it so the tall skinny bookcase didn't need to be cut down for the angled wall. For the support, we're using two by sixes and we cut them the same height as the angle of the ceiling. Screw the back piece into the wall and then use two by fours to attach the front piece of the two by six to create the side support. So this corner, Preston cut an angled piece and then he cut, cut connector pieces to go between them. So this goes to this and then this goes to here and it is very sturdy. So this back piece is in its spot now. The bookcases are all looking really good, but the triangle above the right bookcase needs to be custom built. Begin by cutting a piece of the Billy bookcase on an angle. Screw that into the bookcase next to it. Note, we found that it was most affordable to buy a second small Billy bookcase to cut up for this project because plain melamine from the hardware store costs more. Continue cutting boards for each side and then use screws to attach them into the studs in the wall or the side supports. For the backer, we had to cut it into three pieces. Each piece needs to be cut at an angle at the top. Then use shims behind the backer board so it can be mounted at the right depth. Continue with each piece of the backer board until they are all in place. Now above where the fireplace will be, we're adding in some hidden storage. When I was planning this project, I saw that most people close up this area and I thought, what a waste, so we're gonna use it. To begin the hidden storage, we nailed in the board to where it will be. This wall used to have a dinosaur mural and I didn't want that to show through, so this just covers what was on the wall. We got two by fours and mounted them on the bookcases. This will be the shelf brackets and where we'll mount the facing for the storage. Then my husband started working on the frame for the fireplace and we have a whole separate video with a full tutorial on this. Then over the front of the two by fours we nailed on, we put a plywood front. We added shelves to the hidden storage and cut out the middle of the plywood front so that you can access the hidden storage. Then on the back of some art we wanted for over the fireplace, we added a piano hinge and screwed that into the plywood front. This creates the door for the hidden storage. So cool, right? Last week we finished off with the fireplace. 
To finish the bottom of the bookcases, we nailed on baseboard. There's a few layers of different baseboard to get it tall enough to reach the bottom of the Billy bookcases. We had one outlet at the bottom of the bookcase, and to make that accessible, we just added a spacer and then put the outlet back into place. So this means we can still use it, even though it's in the bookcase. It's time now to install the crown molding. This was a little tricky because of the angle of the slope ceiling, but my husband figured it out and we nailed it into place. The trim makes the bookcase really come to life and look built in. After the crown molding is installed, we started putting up all the trim over all the seams at the front of the bookcases. It's such a subtle difference, but it's really nice to cover up the gaps in any of the places where two bookcases touch each other for a professional look. Once all the trim is installed, I start on the finish work. I fill all the holes with wood filler and then sand those smooth in all the seams I caulk. And then once that's done, I paint everything. For this project, I'm using Frosted Sage by Bear. We added a battery powered light for over the art to make it look very classy. And then I put stickers over all the screw and the shelf holes. It's probably better to wood fill them and then sand and paint, but using stickers over the holes was so much faster. Finally, it's time to fill up all the bookcases with the books. These are all books my son loves to read or that we have on hand a lot of them are classic kids books which I really love um my son also drew art for each shelf so each shelf has like a different color art of something he loves which I think is very fun and I just love how rainbow bookshelves look together it's so easy to find the things at least for me and it's just really aesthetically pleasing after weeks of working on the project here is how it turned out I'm so proud of these bookcases they add such a presence to the room they're cozy and absolutely ground the space which was the goal from the beginning. At night I turn on the fireplace as I read it on and it's so warm and cozy. This is an electric heater so it does warm up the room. One detail I really love is the art on the shelves. Over a month ago when I started planning on this project I bought mini canvases from the art store and each weekend Don would paint a different piece of art for the shelves. Each piece is focused on a different color and he painted some of his favorite things. This was a very fun project for both of us and I think he'll really like having his art on display. On the outside corner of the bookshelf I also painted that the color I needed to prime it a few times so it won't scratch off but I think that looks very nice. Here's a video of the hidden storage open and closed. I haven't put anything in there yet but I think it'll be a great place for kid treasures. Having more storage in a child's space is always nice. The books on the shelves are both books we've had for ages and some I've been collecting recently of classic kids books that are printed on really beautiful editions, hardcover with illustrations inside. I have a bunch that I'll link in the description if you're interested in these. I am so pleased with how this whole project came together. It feels special and interesting and definitely like it'll grow nicely with my son. Let me know if you have any questions about how this project came together in the comments. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see more videos like it in the future.